body. I'm curious, what do we do? I have people talk to me and say that, you know, when you're ready, when you get your RB, just come talk to me. I'll participate. I have that experience before. And if you need more people, we can do a snowball sampling. And when you look at quantitative, you don't need a lot of people. So I'm hopeful. Very hopeful. I don't like anything that is easy. That's my problem. I like I like the taboo. I like the controversial topics. I like things that I struggle with. It makes sense to me. I think it's a painful process. It's difficult to do it. It doesn't matter what topic you do your dissertation. If I cannot, if I don't pick something that is personal to me and I'm passionate about it, I don't think it's easy. I think that answers your question. Yeah. So yeah. So. A lot of the focus of this program, and we do this program in, in University City also, is talking about the kind of cross-professional or interdisciplinary benefits of work that you do. So when both of you actually were talking, I was thinking, how does this research also inform, you know, doctors patient relationships, or teacher-student relationships, or student affairs professionals and college students relationships. Do you think that there's enough research being done in, in those areas as far as you know, someone who's in a position of power having a, a relation with or, or, or being attracted to someone in a, in a position that's, you know, underneath? I mean, I think that this is interesting and it's very your your topic's very specific but how do you think it might help or inform additional research across across the profession i think i think it will help um a lot of things okay. you know i think um there are some books that talk about the therapist attraction from a freudian perspective a psychoanalyst perspective and they talk about the role of clergy and talk about lawyers talk about teachers talk about yeah professionals and even like a few of the studies that had the supervisor supervisee relationship all they talk about was a supervisor having sex with the supervisee and that the supervisee being at more risk of becoming involved with their client so yeah it does cross boundaries to a lot of relationships that there is a power differential I think it's more salient when you look at mental health fields or fields that people are very because of mental health, like you about you come for help, you, you pour your heart out there. You know, in medical fields, the same thing. There are some studies of, uh, with gynecology that I was like, oh, okay, hello. You know, that was hard too. Um, lawyers, you can see that, but I think if there's a relationship, there's not so much um, sharing and intimacy, it might be slightly different, the power relationship. But this, I think people are very vulnerable when they come to you. So can you share your uh, professional opinion, what the best solution would look like to address? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's very hard. Um, we were debating, when I uh, talked to Ken about this several times, Ken is very like, therapists should be transparent and talk to the clients about everything. And I was like, yeah, well, if the client has a sexual trauma and you're talking about an attraction attracted to you, then you almost like objectifying the client because the client's hyper vigilant about their sexuality already. You know what I mean? So it, it is really hard to tell. I mean, right now, I really don't have an opinion. And that's why I want to do this. Because I want to make sure that I have a better understanding of it. I wouldn't say talk to a supervisor would be a good one, but I don't think a lot of supervisors are even able to handle this. You know, I think some supervisors are, but I'm not sure if all supervisors are. And I wonder like how cross-gender also play a role in this, how some of the other um, contextual variables play a role in this, and at the level of how you feel comfortable talking to people about those kind of issues. Yeah. So your use of the feminist perspective is just to explain the awkwardness or any, the inherent inequality that exists within that relationship? Yeah. So that's... Mm -hmm. And also the importance to look at the contextual variables that have not been addressed in the literature. Like, okay, so I know the therapists are white males, okay? I know the clients are females, but do I know anything else? I do know they have a struggle with depression, 
this, but do I know anything else about them? No, I don't. You know what I mean? And I think it's important because I think it informs who we are and informs who our clients are. So I think the contextual barrier is very important to be explored. But I don't think the feminists explain everything, right? Because then how to explain maybe the oppressor becomes the oppressed when a feminist, a female therapist get involved in front of the female client. You know, because they're also the feminists, they talk about gender roles, right? And then women are seductive and men are the rescuers, and they say that impact the relationship as well. But the, that was the feminist critique of it, though. In terms of like, yeah. breaking mm -hmm. free from those gender roles. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, because I remember when you said it, and maybe you know, that's your own way. You said you were surprised in terms of a female. With another female. With, yeah, I was. With another female. Yeah, I was. I think that that's the part of me that um, has a tendency, that's my bias, that has a tendency to look at women as victims. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, if Renata, if you want to stick around, if you guys have some further questions, feel free to stay. But we are going to end recording officially close. and officially close this event. Thank you so much. I know Sam. Thank, Thank you for coming. I'm gonna do it now too. Sure, advisory.